Okay, so I want to welcome you all, and uh, this is Dr. Sam Benjamin, Primary Care, Newstalk 92.3 KTAR. My show is on Saturdays from 4 to 5, and I expect you to be there after you see this great session we're going to have. We're going to be talking about whooping cough, and we're going to be with two wonderful guests who would like to welcome Dr. Seema Yasmin. Dr. Yasmin is from the Centers for Disease Control. If you don't know what the CDC or Centers for Disease Control is, let me tell you that it is the premier organization dealing with many things and trends about healthcare and data, but certainly in this particular case with infectious diseases, diseases caused by bacteria, viruses, by germs. Whooping cough, we're going to be talking about because it's a big issue, is caused by a germ, a germ, well, okay, and uh, Bordetella pertussis. So we're going to talk about that and welcome, Thank first you. of all, to the show. Thank you for having me. What are you doing here, coming from London, by the way? So I work in the CDC's Epidemic Intelligence Service, and I'm assigned to the Arizona Department of Health and Maricopa County, and I investigate disease outbreaks and do public health surveillance. And pertussis is a really big problem in Maricopa County at the moment, so I've been very busy working on pertussis outbreaks here. Now, we were lucky enough to meet you because of the efforts of the March of Dimes. Absolutely. And, and we're going to talk about the March of Dimes just a little bit, if you would. And I want to thank you from the outset for bringing Dr. Yasmin to us and for doing what you're doing in, in our state. And I want to introduce you to uh, Terry Spitz. Terry Spitz, Director of Communications. Communications. Okay. Yes. March of Dimes. Tell us just a little bit about what you're doing here. Well, you know, March of Dimes has been fighting for children for 75 years. So, um, you know, we started with polio, as you can remember. And you did a pretty good job. Yeah, we did. We wiped <laughs> it out. So, um, you know, that when we hear about things like whooping cough coming back, that's something that we want to put a stop to right away. So we've been trying to get more awareness in the community about vaccinations and about just the, the dangers of it and how we can, you know, work together to get people. Yeah, but wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the big deal? It's just a cough, right? This is years ago was a big deal, not now, right? That's what you would think, but you would be wrong. So the symptoms of pertussis can just be a runny nose and a slight cough. And especially in adults, we can get this kind of horrible nagging cough and you feel fine in between these fits of coughing. But for children, it's a very serious problem. And very recently here in Maricopa County, we had a very young baby pass away from whooping cough. So it, it can actually cause death. In children, it can cause death. Is it just the cough? And, and how long does it last? I mean. Does it matter just a few days? What's the story? Tell me about it. So the symptoms vary by people. And like I said, in adults, it can be quite a mild illness. But in children, we really worry about it because they can have a really long cough, sometimes for upwards of 10 weeks. And it's very distressing. Ask anybody who's seen a child with whooping cough. They can sometimes turn blue. They're literally gasping for air in between these fits of coughing. And they become very distressed. Now, there was an epidemic, I think, in 2010 in California. There was. And there is one right now ongoing in the state of Washington. Yes, and here too, we've had really high rates of whooping cough in Maricopa County. We've seen a big rise compared to the number that we had a few years ago. And as I mentioned, this recent death of a very young child. How do, how do kids get it? So this is the worrying thing. For us, we have this mild illness. We might not even know we have whooping cough. We just kind of think it's nothing. But children get it from adults. And the CDC did a study a few years ago, and they found that for three quarters of children with whooping cough, they got it from an adult or an adolescent in their household. So that means mum, dad, granddad, grandmother, one of their older siblings gave them pertussis. So, okay, adults give it to kids. Kids get into trouble with it. Yes, right? absolutely. All right, so my question is, what do we do? How do I prevent it so that the kids don't get it from adults? And how do I prevent the adults from getting sick? It's actually really simple. What you have to do is go to your doctor or go to a pharmacist and ask them for the whooping cough booster shot. It's one vaccine and you can ask everyone to get it, all the adults in your household, anyone that comes into contact with your children, the granddad, grandparents, the babysitter, and even the older children in your house should get this shot. Now, you said going to your doctor. Uh, maybe I don't have health insurance. Mm -hmm. Or I don't want to go to the doctor and pay a $20 copay or $25 copay. You mentioned the pharmacy. Yes. So they can just walk in and get it? So in Arizona, it's great. You can just go to a pharmacist and get the shot without needing a prescription. And if you need more information, then you can go to a great website called whyimmunize.org. And that has information about where, which providers provide it and where you can go to get the vaccine. You know, I'm uh, a physician that um, does a lot of alternative medicine. It's part of what I do integral with conventional care. Okay. And a lot of parents come to me and they say, hey, um, what about the long-term side effects of the vaccine? After all, I, uh, I don't want my kid to have something that's not natural. What would you say to that? 
So that's a very fair question for a parent to ask. But again, we remind them that this is a disease that children can die from. And in this day and age, we're still seeing deaths. During the California outbreak, I think 11 babies died. And in 2011, there were 27 deaths from whooping cough across the country. And 25 of those were in babies who were younger than three months of age. The vaccine is safe. We don't know so much about the long-term sequelae, but again, you want your children to reach that age where they might have long-term sequelae. And I, I wanna say that again to everybody listening, because I think what Dr. Yasmin said is very important. You might be concerned about what happens if you're into natural care, but what about the fact that your kid might not make it to be old enough to worry about the long-term side effects? I think that I agree with you. I think, I think that's a very important issue. Uh, Maybe it's not such a big deal. If my kid gets it, why can't I just give them an antibiotic? Why can't they get a Z pack? Uh, why can't we go down to Mexico and get something over the counter? Because it can be a really serious infection in children, and we see lots of children have to go to hospital because of whooping cough and the complications they get. They can actually have fits because they have whooping cough, they can have pneumonia, and they can actually die from the disease. So the antibiotic doesn't just instantly cure it, like say strep throat. Well, you can have a, a course of antibiotics to treat the disease, but what we're trying to do here is stop the spread of the disease. And we want to stop adults transmitting it to children and then children from spreading it to other children. Now, the symptoms initially in an adult are pretty mild, right? Could it be that as a physician, when I see people in my office, I might miss what the diagnosis is? You might do actually, because in adults, they can just have a slight runny nose and a fits of coughing, and they can feel fine between those fits of coughing. And we're thinking that even though we're seeing so many new cases of whooping cough reported, we're actually missing a whole bunch of cases because it's not being diagnosed. Okay, I'm starting to get this now. It could be really dangerous. The antibiotics, they may, may, they may help, but as a doctor, I might miss in my office a diagnosis and not implement antibiotic therapy sure. early enough to begin with. The vaccine is easy to get. It's easy and it's safe. You can go to your doctor or to a pharmacist and ask them for the whooping cough booster vaccine. And that's the single most important thing you can do to protect yourself and all of the children around you. What about people when they're older? People say 65 and older. Are they susceptible to problems with whooping cough? Absolutely, and we're seeing that with the elderly, they can also become really sick from whooping cough and pass away from the disease. What's also important is that grandparents are often around young children, and so the CDC now recommends that everybody gets the whooping cough booster vaccine, especially seniors over the age of 65. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna be sure that on my website blog, within the next 24 hours from when you see this video, there will be the exact recommendations of the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, with regard to the vaccine so that you know about it. You know who should get it, when they should get it. What about pregnant women, for example? So we recommend that pregnant women receive the whooping cough booster vaccine Even as well. if they're pregnant? Even if they're pregnant, you need to ask your doctor about it and you can have it after 20 weeks of pregnancy. And that's really important because you can actually start to protect your newborn before they're even born and also protect them once they're, they're delivered. What about in the county? Can the county, uh, uh, let's say I don't have money. I can't, a pharmacy is going to charge me money. Doctor is going to charge me money in most cases. What, what about the county? Are there places that I could go to get myself, my family, my children immunized if I don't have any money? Well, uh, we, we just mentioned the website, whyimmunize.org. If you go there, you can find out where you can get immunized regardless. So, so there are places to go. Yeah, we, we want to make sure that everyone is getting access to the, that vaccine. Is there so. any reason why I should not get immunized? Speak with your doctor, but usually there isn't a reason, and it's the single most important thing you can do to protect the children around you. Have you been immunized? Absolutely. How I about you? Immunized. Absolutely. I'm going to get immunized over the next week, and maybe we'll video that. And I'm going to go to my pharmacy and do it. So I can think of no reason why to do it. I want to thank you both very much for being here. Thank, thank you. Dr. Yasmin, Ms. Spitz. Thank you. And did I pronounce your name right? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank I got you. nervous about it. What can I tell you? As you get older, the memory goes. It's you know, a little foggy. You're not sure what planet you're on. But I want to thank you. I want thank to thank you. you for viewing this, and I want you to take this very seriously. This is no joke. What happens is you hear these safety things all the time. There are some things that are really important. Just remember this. Kids are defenseless. You are responsible for what happens. Immunizing them makes an extraordinary difference for them and gives them a shot. You know, the numbers may not sound that big. Nine kids, one kid, three kids, unless it's your kid. Be well. God bless.